nothing leaves this room and nothing comes into this room. I know where everything is, what everything does. Everything's clean. You know, I've got three really good torque wrenches and then buy the best measuring equipment you can buy. You know, um, you, can, you can go to Halfords and you can buy a five pound micrometer or you can go out and buy Mitsutoyo one, and that's not even a fancy one. Chris, you can plug these things into computers now. Same with the gauges we use for the micrometers we use, you know. And just over time, you just you, you build up what you need. You know, cylinder heads. There's cylinder head stands. Um, that's a, a piston ring compressor tool we use on the bike stuff, where the rings are really soft. Uh, if you've ever tried to get valve guide stem seals off you'll know that they're brilliant um that's just a snap-on tool for getting them off um uh, a ring setting tool so when you want to measure your rings in your bores so you can gap them right you or ring squaring tool you push it into the bore and then you sit this little tool down on top push it down it stops on the top of the uh, block face and then it sets the ring square in the square in so then you can use your feeler gauges to figure out what your ring what your ring gap is um, and then you start off with a little diamond file and you and you do your you do your ring gap for your diamond file or we've got the um, pro seal uh, ring tool uh, which is a whole other video on its own um, you know piston piston whacker so when you've when you've put a piston in a in a we've got different ones. So obviously we do um, 5.2 V10, 5 liter V10. They're piston fitting tools. So you sit the piston, push the piston with the rings on down inside it, and as it goes down, it's tapered. It squeezes the rings in. But if you don't have that, you use one of these. When you sit the you got your rings on your pistons on your rod, you sit it over. You clamp it up with your tool, and then you use your fancy piston hammer to just tap it in place. Um, you know, so you could start off with that. I think they're 60, 70 quid each, but once you've used that, and then you've used those, change your life. Um, that's, uh, that was the one we used for C63. That's uh, a Yamaha one for our six engines. Uh, you've got degree wheels for when you're timing cams. Uh, what else we got? Um, a piston ring removal tool. Um, so I don't like it. I think I find it a little bit clumsy. Um, but essentially, if you watch at the bottom now, it will open a ring up. Um, I, I just it I you haven't got the same feel. So I didn't I haven't really got on board with that. Um, locking tools for different engines we do. Um, yeah, uh, for measuring piston height. Uh, again, that's another ring squaring tool. Um, that's for putting valve stem seals on. Uh, a couple of different ball uh, DTI gauges, and then I got given this when I was on placement in Germany. Um, ball measuring tool. So that's what you use to measure your um, ball diameter or your bearing diameter. I mean, that'll do your big end bearings, your main bearings, and your ball diameter. But that's what that's used for. I haven't quite saved up the pennies yet to buy the sun in one. Um, yeah, just that's 20 years of, you know, another uh, valve stem seal tool remover. That's the new Darza engine cam locks. Uh, they're for putting uh, front and rear main seals in. Uh, the new 5.2 in the engines in the Hurricane and the Gen 2 R8 don't have dowel pins on the cam bridge. So you put them through the cam bridge first, like that. And then as you're feeding the cam bridge onto the top of the head, they locate in those holes and then they stay in place then while you tighten the cam bridge down. 
Whereas the earlier engines, they had dowels in them. So just, just little bits and pieces you build up over time. Um, that's the vise we use. So you put that in a vise and then you put your rod in it. So you can undo your rods, rod bolts uh, and it's aluminium so you don't damage them. Uh, etcher, everything we take out we etch. So we mark, mark and number everything. Uh, micrometer, holder, sat on a bench and you're trying to measure trying to measure different bits and pieces, you know. It just takes a little bit of time to build everything up. Putting valve, valve springs in, you know. You start with one of those. I've got a smaller one in there somewhere. You start with one of those. Um, and now we've got uh, a different type of kit, which is... One of these and this works by bolting that plate to top of cylinder head you load your collets into this device so you use a special loading tool load your collets into this device you sit it down over the spring and a retainer and then you use a lever bar, there's a, there's a retaining pin that goes in here. Use a lever bar to press down, compress the spring and the retainer, pull the pin out, and it just allows the collets to engage on a valve. You know, so the money you can spend on tools. Yeah, just build it up slowly, all takes time. Something's fair to say that there's an awful lot goes into it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a process that takes a long time to get it done the correct way. Yeah, 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 but, and that's it, that's the best way to describe it, is engine building is a process, um, and the better you get at that process, the better your engines are. Um, cleanliness is next to godliness, that's the, the key, the most important thing I can say is clean cleanliness. Being thorough, um, using the right tools, and just taking your time. I'll, to be honest, I build engines at night. The boys have gone home, the phone doesn't ring, I come down, I put my music on, I can set myself out and I get no interruptions because interruptions are, oh, everyone, everyone I tell you, they're the worst. So yeah, and that's, that's when I get, I get more work done, I, go, I don't get disturbed and then I don't make mistakes. And that's the most important thing. But I look, this is the best, this is the best room in the house. This is my favourite room, I think. This is this is what I love doing. Um, yeah. And ju just to sort of recap then, what um, what engines have you currently got work in progress being built? Uh, so five uh, five litre Lamborghini V10 Gallardo, uh, Gen two five point two Audi R8, uh, Gen one five point two Audi R8. A Audi RS3 five cylinder Daza, uh, a new engine, so the new 400 horsepower one. Uh, RS6 V10, uh, BUH engine, and we just finished the V8 C63. Um, there was, I was going to build my Golf engine, but I don't think I will. I think I'll um, I'll leave it as it is. It sounds like you've got plenty to keep you out of mischief for the foreseeable future, mate. Yeah, yeah, we've got we've got that going on. Um, we've got a turbo build to finish. And that's just waiting on me to finish the engine. Uh, we've got two more orders for turbo builds. One wants to do an engine build with that. Um, I've got three gearbox builds on the go. So we do quite a bit with gearboxes as well. So I guess there's um, one for another video. The gearboxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again. Do you, you know, you've got the L140 Graziano box that is the manual box and the E-gear box out of the Lambo, out of the Huracan, out of the Gallardo and the R8. And then you've got the new Graziano DQ800, uh, DL800, which is the DCT in the Huracan and the Gen 2 and the facelift Gen 1s. So we do both of those. Um, yeah, it's always, there's always something going on. Um, it just all takes time. 
Cool. Well, so we, we've got more videos to uh, to get looking into. And yeah. uh, you better get busy building those engines. As long as the camera don't break. <laughs> All right, cheers, buddy. No worries.